Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on the Best of Oklahoma Gardening, we are finding a use for downed trees and other yard debris by creating unique planting beds that build healthier soils. Host Casey Hinches creates a simple raised bed called a keyhole garden, which uses compostable materials to nourish poor soils. And then she introduces us to the concept of hugaculture or mound gardening, utilizing fallen trees to create a water conserving garden with an increased planting area. our regular season but in the meantime we are busy still in the garden as I'm sure you are enjoying some of these warm winter days. We're also working in the office to do a little research on some fun creative projects that you'll be able to implement into your garden next season. That next season will begin on February 13th so join us then. In the meantime we hope you enjoy some of our favorite segments from last year. Today we're going to build a keyhole garden and this is a garden concept that was brought to Africa where they didn't have the greatest soil in some countries and they were kind of limited on the supplies that they had to build a garden. Now the idea of a keyhole garden is utilizing different materials and you can see the overall shape is that keyhole shape. The idea is basically we've layered a lot of organic matter here um, and then we have our central compost pile in the middle. Now as this all breaks down, it will shrink a little bit, but we'll continue to add compost to this center island. And that's why we have this entrance here so we can access it. Now ours is a little bit shorter than what a lot of keyhole gardens are. And that's simply because we wanted to be able to have kids access it and see the compost. Now the metal basket that we used had some sharp edges. So we bent those down and then simply split a hose and put that over there to protect your arms when you're reaching in there um, to deposit some organic matter. As this compost breaks down, it will leach into uh, the, the surrounding raised beds and provide nutrients to these plants as they grow. And it'll continue to improve this soil in this raised bed. Now, we gathered a lot of different supplies to make this. Um, ours is made out of stone here, but a lot of times you'll see in Africa that they're made out of trees um, and logs around the edges, and some are made out of bricks. So really the great thing about keyhole gardening is it allows you to utilize a lot of the materials that you have available to you. So in order to build a keyhole garden, there's a few things that you're gonna need to gather. First of all, we've got some stone here, and this will help make our exterior wall. And then we're gonna need a lot of organic compost matter. And now is a great time to collect a lot of this stuff as you're beginning to clean out your garden. So we have some old straw bells here. We have some shredded paper, some lawn clippings. If you have a fescue lawn during the winter time, you can go ahead and use this. Or if you happen to build one in the summertime, you might have a few more lawn clippings some kitchen scraps. You want to make sure that you don't use any oils or fats or um, anything with meat product in it. Basically just your fruits, your lettuce, things like that. Uh, tea bags, coffee grounds are also great. We have some leaves that we've cleaned up out of the garden. We also have some ornamental grasses that we've cut back, branches, and we also have some animal bedding down here that'll add a nice amount of nitrogen to our compost. You also want to gather some old cardboard and as you can see we have some new boxes here and some that's been sitting in the barn for quite a while. 
Um, eventually it's all going to look like this, so it doesn't matter what condition that cardboard's in. Now, there's a few tools that you're going to need to gather. Um, something to cut with. Uh, so a box knife is great for cutting that cardboard up into different size pieces. You're going to want a tape measure so that you can measure the distance, uh, the radius of your keyhole garden. And then some twine and some marking paint to mark the perimeter of your garden. The keyhole garden got its name after the old fashioned keyhole shape. So here on the ground, we're going to want to create about a six foot circle. And we don't have a compass quite that large, so we've made one basically out of two sticks and some twine. What we've got is a stick here that will act as our center fulcrum. Then we have some twine that we've measured three feet distance from that center compost pile. Now, the reason why you want it to be three feet is basically that will be the adequate distance that that can leach into the soil and provide nutrients to your plant that will be out here on the outside of the bed. So what we're going to do is just simply use this and go around keeping it tight. Now that you have hopefully a circle and not an oval, um, we're going to go ahead and remove our makeshift compass. And you're going to want to find an old cage or something. Um, now in Africa they would have woven a basket for their compost cage that will go in the center of it. But in the spirit of recycling and using things that you already have around the house, we've got this old tomato cage that we're going to use. And we're going to set that in the center right there. Um, it does have stakes on it, so it's nice to go ahead and anchor that down. If yours doesn't have spikes at the end of it, then maybe use some old rocks or something just to secure that in the center. Now the cage we're using here is about 15 inches in diameter. This is a little bit on the small side, um, but if you wanted to do a larger cage, a lot of times they are anywhere from two to three feet in diameter. And this one is also about three feet tall. You might want to get one that's about a four feet tall um, in order to just have a larger keyhole garden. Now if you are going to have a larger compost a center, then the important thing to remember is to come off three feet off of that center. So again, your diameter of your entire keyhole garden would be much larger also. So in Africa, a lot of times they're working with bare soil. Um, as you can see here, we're doing this in a Bermuda lawn area. Um, and you can dig this space out a little bit to remove that Bermuda. But we're going to try something a little bit here, and we're just going to simply layer our organic matter on top of that, almost as if you were doing uh, lasagna composting, and see if we can prevent that Bermuda grass from coming up through the garden. So now we're going to start building our exterior wall. We've got this old stone that we're going to use, but you can really use any old material if you have brick. Um, or even some logs. In Africa, they'll use heavy logs to create that circumference. Um, but we're going to use this stone here. And basically what we're going to do is just start outlining our circle that we've created. And we'll just keep repeating this all the way around. make a complete circle because we want to create a, this access area to our compost uh, bin that will be in the center. Now we've created the entrance here on the north side which is really the ideal place to put it because you don't want to sacrifice any of that uh, southern and western exposure to the sunlight for your plants to grow. So here we've located our access on the north side. The other thing you might notice is that there is some shade casted on the garden right now. So depending on what time of the year you're building your garden, you want to be aware of what that sun exposure will be like in the summertime. We are building this in the wintertime, and so we're getting a lot of shade that won't be there during the summertime. This will be a great spot for our keyhole garden, and our next step is going to be to add another layer of rock to get some more height. Next week we're going to fill our keyhole garden with organic matter and soil and get it ready for planting. Last week we gathered the materials and built the structure for our keyhole garden. This week it's time to fill it and get it ready for planting. 
So now that we have our exterior wall built, what we're going to do is use cardboard to lay down and help suppress that grass from growing, that Bermuda grass. A lot of times I would suggest people to use uh, cardboard to prevent Bermuda grass from coming up in new beds instead of using weed fabric. we have the bottom of the garden lined with cardboard, we're also going to line the sides behind the wall with cardboard as well. Um, some people use different items again to line this, but I, I like the cardboard because it will decompose. So we're using all organic material here, but also the cardboard helps hold that moisture in, which allows this garden to be a more uh, water conserving garden and you don't have to water it as often that way. So now that we have the cardboard fairly in place, as we add stuff to it, it'll help hold that cardboard in place even more. The next thing that we're gonna add is some sticks. Now, you don't wanna put too large of branches in here just because they won't decompose as well. So we're using about half inch to one and a half inch branches. And we're simply gonna layer these in here on top of the cardboard. You do want to mound the sticks a little bit higher towards the inside of the cage because the whole garden is going to slope away from the cage. It's important to water between each layer as you add it. This allows that material to soak up that water, creating that sponge effect, which is really beneficial for the plants. So as you can see, there's quite a variety of material that goes into a keyhole garden. We've used a lot of different dead plant material, and it's a great way to get a garden ready for the spring by taking all of that dead plant material out of your garden and utilizing it here. Now we've got a lot of carbon matter and so to get that to compost we want to add nitrogen. So we've got animal bedding here that is high in urea that we will add on top of that so that it helps to break that down. After layering nitrogen, we're going to put another layer of carbon down by adding these dried ornamental grasses. So the last layer we're going to add is about six inches of good garden soil. And this is what we're going to plant in a little later. This is what will anchor those roots in, and it's the organic matter that's underneath there that's going to provide the nutrients and the moisture to those roots. adding our six inches of soil onto the top of all of our organic matter in the keyhole garden and now it's time to fill up our compost bin and you're going to treat this like a regular compost pile the only thing is, is you'll never have to move this the nutrients as it breaks down goes into the raised bed around it and that's why we've burned our soil towards the compost pile again also to help with water flow away from the compost so we're going to first add some dry leaves into this. It's always important to layer your carbon uh, and also your nitrogen rich material, such as this grass clipping here. So now that we've added the dry leaves, we're gonna put some green grass clippings on top of that. And this will help that composting process. 
After the green glass clippings, we're also going to add some kitchen waste here. We have bananas, old tea bags, old coffee filters and such. And I like to put that kind of lower in the compost pile just in case you have any animals. The nice thing about this cage again is it will keep those animals from getting in there. After our green layer, we're going to go back in with what we call brown material. In this case, it's shredded paper, but basically it's our carbon. So again, this will create more of an interface between the nitrogen of the grass and this dried paper. So the last thing we're going to add to our compost pile is some green material that we actually just took some cuttings out of the greenhouse. There's no diseases or insects on these and so they're really good to compost. So we're going to add those back into the garden. After you've completed the build of your keyhole garden, you want to make sure everything is nice and watered in, including the compost pile. this we watered it in really well and we want to make sure that it does stay moist for a while so that we know that that cardboard and everything is nice and saturated um, and we will be planting this pretty soon but there's one more thing we want to do first and that's to cover up this uh, keyhole entrance right now it has grass growing underneath here and we're simply going to take some of this leftover cardboard and cover that grass to prevent it from growing up um, and the reason why we're wanting to do this is it's going to be a maintenance nightmare to have to get a weed eater in here or it's too small really to get a lawnmower in here to mow that grass plus this will help prevent that grass from getting into the raised bed also so after putting cardboard down we're simply going to cover this up with mulch and it'll create a nice mulch path into our compost pile. Now that we have this little cutout mulch, our keyhole garden is completed and we're really excited to get it planted. This might look like a large pile of wood, but actually we're going to make a raised bed out of this. You might also have a large pile of wood because of all the recent ice storms. And today we're going to show you what hugaculture gardening is. Basically, hugaculture um, was developed in Germany and it stands for, it, it means in German, uh, hill garden or mound gardening. And what we're going to do is basically bury this wood. Um, if you're familiar with lasagna gardening, it's that same sort of principle, but we're doing it on a larger scale here. What we've done is we've dug down a trench, we've filled our wood in here, we've removed uh, some cedar trees and a telephone pole because those don't break down very well. You also want to make sure not to incorporate any walnut trees because those can give off toxins that will prevent your plants from growing. Soft wood uh, decomposes faster than hard wood and you want to make sure that the wood is very dry. As you can see, this is pretty well decomposing already. Um, the reason for this is because it will help that process. If you use willow, you especially want to make sure that it is dry wood so that it doesn't sprout. What we're going to do is we're going to backfill this now with soil that we have excavated. This wood is a carbon material and basically in our compost pile it's going to want to take a lot of the nitrogen out of the soil. So we're going to counteract that by adding manure and additional compost on top of this. And so that will initiate this breaking down process. Now the other thing that these logs are really valuable for is as the water drains down into this and these continue to break down, these logs are almost going to act like sponges holding that moisture in the ground. The more logs you have, the more sponges you have. In theory, if you have a large hugo culture that's about six feet tall, you won't have to water it during the summertime. So we're going to kind of practice and see and monitor that and how much water we have to put on here uh, this summer.
Now, after loading in the logs in the trenched area, we then applied more organic matter so that we could encourage that decomposition process. We first put some manure and uh, compost down, then we put another layer of ornamental grasses, uh, and then finally we top dressed it with some more soil. Now if you didn't have soil, uh, a good way to create that soil is by trenching. Um, or if you already have soil from another location, you can just bring that in and pile it up on top of the lumber. And you can see we're on a slope here, so the water will come down and run into this berm, and those logs will soak up that water. And eventually, as this decomposes more, those logs will provide moisture back into this raised bed, if you will. Now, the other thing you need to know about when you're planting this, you want to make sure that you're not planting it immediately with plants that need a lot of nutrients. As we've said, the logs will take a lot of the nitrogen out of the soil. So for this season, we're just going to cover it with a cover crop that we can then kind of incorporate that green material and allow this to cure a little bit better. While this might look like a giant pile of dirt, um, it will eventually be a nice garden. And I know this might not be appropriate for all landscapes, but you could do the same practice in a smaller version, uh, one that's just a couple of feet high. And again, this is going to shrink over time. This might be a great solution if you have a lot of ice damaged trees or if you're looking for a way to create a berm and to redirect water that might be coming from your neighbor. ago we built a hugeculture or in German that means mound garden or hill garden and as you can see it has significantly shrunk and that's because what we did was we dug a bit of a trench and then we buried a lot of carbon material such as tree trunks in here. Over the past two years as the water has filtered down into our hugeculture that has aided in the decay of our carbon material allowing it to shrink down. Now you can see this season, the weeds got the best of our garden, but at this point we're gonna take advantage of that and go ahead and see what's going on underneath our soil. Now we have a bit of a clue here. You can see there's mushrooms growing in our hugo culture, and that indicates that there is the decay happening and the carbon material starting to break down. We wanna see if we can find any tree trunks that might still be remaining or what's exactly going on. So now for the fun part. see we've cut into just about a third of our hugo culture here and again the height has significantly decreased we're about half the height that it was originally we still are finding some logs in here but they are not at all to the degree that they were when we first put them in here you can see there's some white growth on there and that's all bacteria that's starting to break down our logs and stuff they pretty much flake apart i mean just look at how uh soft this wood is at this point and that's all going to add organic matter into our soil here. Now right now these are really uh, soggy actually because of that moisture retaining um, ability and so you can see also there's some roots in here. All the different plants that have grown in here um, have created roots establishing pores that help allow that infiltration of the water and the bacteria to go ahead and start the decomposition process. So what was a log is now just breaking apart and turning into organic matter into our soil. Now that we've buried more organic matter, we're gonna let that decompose slowly over the winter months. We always have to worry when we add more organic matter that the carbon's gonna tie up the nitrogen. And so we're gonna add crimson clover seed as a winter cover crop. And we know uh, clover is a legume that fixes its own nitrogen, so it won't be as deficient and be able to grow better here. 
It also will serve as kind of a, a green material that next spring we'll be able to incorporate in that Hugo culture and have a nice bed to plant on. Now, Hugo culture is basically a slow form of composting. It's a way of adding organic matter and cleaning up the garden during this time of year to get rid of those unsightly landscape debris that you might have and incorporate it into your soil so that you're improving your garden as you grow. Next week on The Best of Oklahoma Gardening, we will be exploring the science of horticulture. We'll look at how to keep plants healthy, backyard ecosystems, what parts of plants that we eat, and the movement of water through plants. Until then, we wish you health and wellness, and we'll see you next week for more TV You'll Grow to Love. To find out more information about show topics, as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure and visit our website, oklamagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussions on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows, as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater Jewel. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Pond Pro Shop, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, the Oklahoma Horticultural Society, and the Tulsa Garden Club.